This is a breakdown on how I achieve the Devil May Cry door system. By the end of this video, you should be able to create a door system similar to this, where if you walk close to the door, the hand will come out and attack you. As you can see, the player has been damaged here. And there's a little debug button here that will show the door exploding animation. And then the door is unlocked. Hello everyone and welcome to this Tatus video. Today I'm going to do a little breakdown on this uh, Devil May Cry style door system. There's a lot to go through so I'll be as quick as I can for you. We're going to start in the player. So I've got a, a begin play uh, update camera, camera to use. Um, this just passes through any camera so you can have this camera as the active camera then you move over here. This one is kind of like how Devil May Cry 1 did it. And uh, so update camera, we're setting the camera to use if you want to interpret. So if you want to make it a smoother transition, you can put that in as well. And then we set view target with blend. Um, you use that for basically changing cameras in Unreal Engine 4. And then we're setting the control rotation. This is so when you move like left to right, as you can see, I'm moving left to right relative to this camera here. Um, if we were to switch to the other camera, I'd then be moving left to right relative to that camera. We'll cover that more in the Resident Evil camera tutorial later, but for now we're going to move on here. Um, so here's my inputs of moving left to right. I've got a block input, so players can't input during our mini cutscene, and then it's just the bog standard movement inputs that come with the default third person template. Um, and then we've got these here. These are blueprint interfa interfaces. We'll go into them more in detail in the future of what are blueprint interfaces. Um, but the basic gist are, here are th some events that I can call from anywhere. So damage player, temporarily take control of the camera and have your camera back. And then what I do is I create the blueprint interface by blueprints, blueprint interface, and then create the functions I want. And then I can go to class settings and then add an interface here. As you can see, the BPI 3D players there. So then what you do is, for example, damage player, I type in damage player, which is the event from the interface. And then when it gets called, this will fire. So at the minute, I'm printing a string, uh, taking control of the camera. We're feeding in a camera. Um, you can see that in the blueprint interface just here. It's just got an input of camera. So, hey, you want to borrow my camera for a minute sure you know give me your camera and we're setting for you target again that's how you take control of cameras in Unreal Engine 4 and then we're blocking input so the player can't input anything and then have your camera back we're updating camera which was this vent again and we're updating the camera and then letting the player move again so that's basically the player that's all it is for the player let's move on to the door itself the, it seems quite complicated but it's relatively simple what we're doing is, if we look at the viewport really quickly, we've got a mesh here. Actually, let's show that mesh real quickly. So we've got the mesh here called Door Evil. All it is, I'm not sure if we can see it with simple collision, it's just a two-sided box. I've removed the insides, and it's got this nice little texture here. Um, that material is here. All it is is a texture that looks like this, and then it's set to pan just any random direction don't really care then I've got a lerp here so change between two values um, and what I've got here is a destroy evil we'll call that in a second but basically when we want the evil to disappear from the door we'll set that parameter to one and it will disappear excellent so that's that mesh let's go back to where we were so we've got that mesh and we've got this this hand that comes out of the door uh, which is a and we've got a box we'll talk about in a moment. We've got a hand that comes out the door, kind of like Devil May Cry. There originally was a different mesh for this, and uh, full disclaimer, I had to remove the mesh because it was a bit too explicit for YouTube. Um, but such is life. Um, so what we've got here is we've got this mesh, which is just a nice, long, nothing dirty. Uh, we've got a sphere at the end of it, and that sphere is going to basically look for the player. If the player hits it, they'll take damage. And we've got a destructible mesh here. You can create this with add component destructible. That doesn't do anything at the moment, um, but it does further on in the code. Um, this is the destructible mesh here. To create them, you go to blueprint door, blueprint door meshes, right click the mesh. As you can see, this is a finger mesh and then create destructible mesh. And here is our destructible mesh. Um, you can copy these settings here. I've just changed everything to one. So basically as soon as it spawns, it's just gonna blow up. Um, and then what you do is you set these settings here, press fracture mesh, and then you 
make sure you improve your depth one and then you can see how it fractures nice finger breaking animation there excellent and that's that's all it is for there you've got a box collider as well to check if the player is close to it and there is the camera here for um when the animation's playing you'll see the camera of the exploding animation you can move that in the scene for example i've got it up here the way you can move it is by adding a camera transform variable and setting it to instance editable and show 3d widget so what that will do is it will show the 3d widget in the scene and let you move the camera to wherever you'd like to and now i've put it there so let's move on to the actual code so you can understand why i've put this together like this so begin play we're setting the monster to behind the the door um so it's always going to hide behind here where the player can't get to it and then we are getting all actors with interface remember we talked about that interface a minute ago so we're getting all the actors by the interface searching for the player getting the first entry we get and that's the player we don't need to do anything fancy there then we're getting the material off the the door you know the skulls and then we're just saving that to a variable so we can talk to that later so that's the begin play now we're moving on to the overlaps the triggers so to create overlaps you create like a box collider like this right click add event and then on overlap what we're doing when we're overlapping is checking is the thing that hit us does it have the interface player so is it the player yes it is so do this once and then we've got a little animation here that's all this is here on the update is updating an animation of the 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 finger almost to something else then the finger coming out and looking around and we can see that real quick here so hitting you are you player yes you are i'm going to come out and have a look around and obviously i got damaged there because i'm a player it's it looks complicated at first but when you break it down it's really nothing so begin overlap on the sphere as i said about the damaging the player so something hit us is it the player yes it is do this once hurt the player again going back to the 3d player the damage player event here that's all it is and to do something like that all you have to do is other actor and damage player and because it's an interface it knows to listen out for that interface nice and simple and then wait three seconds then they can get hit again if they're stupid excellent uh, oh and in that old other animation we're waiting two seconds resetting it just just to clear that up and then finally we have been destroyed so at the minute i'm doing this on a debug button so basically if you hit the button is it the player yes tell the door it's been destroyed but you could fire this anyway you could check how many enemies are left in the scene uh, if a secret object's been found so whatever you want to do you you put it in and then call we have been destroyed and then do this once stop the monster attack animation so that's this animation here stop that um tell the sphere it can no longer hurt the player just in case the player is a bit too close and then tell the player that we want their borrow their camera as we explained and then another animation to play it's just the same animation but quicker um, but what we've also added is inside the animation we have added a zero to one float so it goes from zero to one over 0.25 seconds and what you can see here is we're setting the scalar parameter of the material from earlier so what that means is basically if we go back into the material really quickly this is lerping from a to b on a zero to one scale so if we're slowly moving towards zero to one it will slowly fade out uh, and give us a nice little effect there and then once that's done we are going to come here hide the monster as he's about to die um, basically we're doing a switch out we're hiding the monster creating a destructible mesh and then blowing that up because normal static meshes can't be destroyed so hide the monster make sure there's no collision on it set the destructible mesh to our destructible mesh set it to simulate physics so it can blow up and then just hurt it a little and then from there wait two seconds and then give the player control back and then destroy this actor and that's it as you can see here we push the button and boom there you go so if you've got any questions feel free to answer answer ask them in the chat and apart from that i will see you in the next video thank you for watching